This is an unexpected follow-up to a video I did yesterday about a Trump town hall event in Flint, Michigan, in which Trump's staggering cognitive decline was on full display. But something else happened at that event, which sadly is quite notable and shocking, because it's about how Donald Trump referred to President Biden, how the MAGA crowd reacted to Trump referring to Biden that way, and how the moderator, Republican Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, reacted to all of it. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video, and I understand that at seemingly when you see this, you might not it might not be immediate how notable this is, but given the current state of American politics, I do think this is something to make note of, and it's actually pretty damn shocking what Donald Trump did and the specific words that he used and it's actually been part of kind of a, a trend here lately. I don't know if Donald Trump is so exhausted by the lies or if the cognitive decline is catching up to him. But during the town hall event in Flint, Michigan, Donald Trump described how President Biden called him in the aftermath of the second failed assassination attempt. We're going to play the clip. And there's just so much packed in here. I want you to really make note first of Donald Trump's words. And I have to say that uh, President Biden called me yesterday. He was very nice. We had a very nice conversation. I appreciated that he called about, you know, what happened the other day. And he says, <laughs> he's, he's committed. He's committed. No, but and today, I, a little while ago, I got a, nice, a very nice call from Kamala. No. It was very nice. It was very nice. It's it's it was very, very nice. And, and we appreciate that. But we have to take back our country. We have to win. We're going to win and we're going to make America great again. That's all there is to it. So there was a lot packed in there. OK, so first, I want you to take note of how he describes his opponent. Well, his former opponent, his um, the guy that he has been making fun of and demeaning and belittling for years. This is how he referred to President Biden. And I have to say that uh, President Biden called me yesterday. It was very So this is probably the first time, I think it's the first and only time I have heard Donald Trump publicly refer to Joe Biden as President Biden. As a matter of fact, one of the things I've noticed uh, when it comes to MAGA Republican politicians they have been less reluctant to address the president by his title than I've ever seen before. OK, so they'll call, for example, if you go to any Republican Twitter page, uh, social media page, if you hear them in press conferences, you will hear or see them refer to Donald Trump as President Trump. And then if they address if they refer to President Biden, more often than not, they refer to him as Joe Biden or Biden. They will not give him the title, even though he, not Trump, is the president of the United States, the sitting president. And it, it means to connote disrespect. It's part of the reason, quite frankly, why I do not refer to Donald Trump as President Trump, even though former presidents keep the title. I also think it's important to distinguish between the sitting president and former presidents. But I've referred to Ronald Reagan, George Bush, George H.W. Bush. Every other Republican president, no matter how much I dislike them, I refer to them by their title because I do have respect for the office. But given the enormous disrespect Donald Trump has for the office, he's just Trump to me. He's Donald Trump. He's not President Trump. But Donald Trump at a MAGA rally referred to Joe Biden as the president of the United States, President Biden. Now, that is noteworthy in and of itself. And to me, almost a tacit concession that Trump realizes that Joe Biden is indeed the president, whether he likes it or not. The other notable thing here, the second notable thing, is how MAGA reacted to hearing Donald Trump refer to President Biden as President Biden and actually saying that the conversation he had was nice, that when President Biden called him, it was actually a nice, respectful conversation. Listen to what the MAGA cultist in the audience said. Okay. And he says, what happened the other day? <laughs> so you can't hear it very well, but what the guy in the crowd said, and I'm just going to quote it directly, is he says, fuck Biden. OK, so for in a rare, in, like an insanely rare moment of 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 just unexpected quasi civility, Donald Trump referred to the president of the United States by his title and MAGA in the crowd is so upset by that and, and so upset uh, to hear Trump call President Biden nice, that they have to shout out that invective, fuck Joe Biden. Now, obviously, because Donald Trump is not 
a kind or civil man. He laughs at it and says the guy is committed. But also note how Sarah Huckabee Sanders, a sitting Republican governor, reacted to the whole thing. Happened the other day. And he says, he's, he's committed. So that's a sitting Republican governor laughing at a Republican Trump supporter hurling invective at the current sitting president of the United States. Now, in times past, in the age of John McCain and Barack Obama, when civility, particularly on the Republican side, since they're the least civil of the political parties now, but when there was more civility in the Republican Party in particular, uh, the moderator, the Republican moderator would either have shamed that person or would have not reacted out of respect for the occupant of the White House. But because MAGA is so inherently uncivil in today's times, she laughs at it. OK, imagine how Republicans would react if the shoe was on the other foot and somebody said F Donald Trump and a sitting Democrat laughed. OK, they would be very upset. As a matter of fact, during the Trump administration, uh, Republicans would repeatedly complain about Democrats being insufficiently respectful to Donald Trump, even though he was, you know, consequently very uh, disrespectful to them. Right. Again, the standards of civility are always that you have to treat Trump and Republicans with the highest level of respect. Uh, but Democrats just need to take what Republicans give them. So it's just so interesting to me that Trump referred to Biden by his title, that MAGA clearly didn't like it, that Sarah Huckabee Sanders, a sitting Republican governor, uh, reacted with amusement and joy that people were disrespecting President Biden. But again, also note Trump's reaction to the aftermath of it, too. He's committed. No, but and today, I, a little while ago, I got a, nice, a very nice call from Kamala. No, it was very nice. It was very nice. It's it's it was very, very nice. And, and we appreciate that. But we have to take back our country. We have to win. So then he immediately goes back to taking back the country. And he was pretty mean in, in other parts of the conversation or the parts of the town hall as well, using the typical Trump invective. But what I think happened, this is me just speculating, is Donald Trump. You know, I, I think Donald Trump is a terrible person. I think that he is a threat to democracy. I think that he has been corrosive to our politics. I think that this was a rare flash. I don't know if it was like a cynical ploy to try to engender sympathy, like, OK, I guess I'll try this whole civility thing for just a minute. Or if he because he's so susceptible to flattery, the fact that his political opponents actually did call to check in on him actually resonated with him because they're, they're showing him attention and sympathy that he actually expressed that in a rare moment of humanity. And given the negative backlash that it received, like basically, OK, Joe Biden was nice to me, so I'll call him President Biden. And I'll acknowledge that he said something nice to me, that he checked in on me. And the same thing with Vice President Harris, even though he didn't use her title. And then when MAGA reacted to it viscerally in a, in a wrong way, they didn't cheer, they didn't celebrate. He could tell he was losing the crowd. Then he had to ramp back up the rhetoric. Oh, we got to take back our country. We got to beat him and whatever. It's just so interesting. That, that segment really, I've been thinking about that segment for hours, kind of in the back of my head. Like, it's so interesting that Donald Trump, I, I don't know, just I, I, that was an unexpected moment. And I think Donald Trump realizes that he has created this cult, which is hostile to the notion of humanizing Democrats. And that's his fault. He is responsible for that. He created this monster. But we've seen this before where, where Trump has primed his cult to believe certain things and react certain ways. And then occasionally, every now and then, it gets the better of him. Do you remember when he went viral several times for trying to take credit for the COVID-19 vaccine, which is something in theory he could take credit for because it was developed under Operation Warp Speed when he was president, okay? He could take credit for it. And a sane person would be able to take credit for it. But the few times he tried, he was publicly booed. And so he stopped taking credit for the vaccine, right? Because he recognized, oh my God, I have primed these people to be so hostile to taking COVID seriously. And they're so conspiracy brained that I can't even take credit for this damn thing. So I'm going to stop doing it. one of the few actual accomplishments of his administration. He can't take credit for because it's one of the few instances where he primed the crowd to overreact. Kind of the same thing here, don't you think? That a rare, unexpected moment of quasi respect for the sitting president of the United States and the vice president was met with total hostility from his own crowd. That's on him. I also think it's interesting, too, because it comes on the heels of Trump publicly admitting in a few sit-down occasions once 
in a, a panel with Moms for Liberty a few weeks ago and then again in a Lex Friedman podcast. Donald Trump also seemed to admit finally that he lost the 2020 election to President Biden. 10 or 12 million votes more than that, more than anybody had ever got. We got the most votes of anybody, of any sitting president in history. And he beat us by a whisker. And Even then, so usually the lie is that he tells his crowd is that we got more votes than everybody. We got more votes than everybody. But then he corrected himself. Well, actually, we got more votes than any sitting president, which was true. Just that Joe Biden got more in 2020. And then he admitted it. He beat us by a whisker, although that's really not true either because 7 million votes isn't a whisker. Again, that's more of an elephant tusk than a whisker. Um, but he then said the same thing in a Lex Friedman interview subsequently. What do you think you'll do in the debate coming up in a few days? So I've done a lot of debating, only as a politician. I never debated. My first debate was the uh, Rosie O'Donnell debate, right? The famous Rosie O'Donnell debate, the answer. Uh, but I've done well with debates. I mean, I became president. Then the second time I got millions more votes than I got the first time. So I was told if I got 63 million, which is what I got the first time, you 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 would win. You can't not win. And I got millions of more votes than that and uh, lost by a whisker. So it's just interesting. I'm trying to think if it's a combination of Trump just being so tired or being cognitively impaired or what i don't know what's going on but he has undercut his own lies and the myths that he has perpetuated in these critical moments now again it's too late i think for for uh donald trump to do a proper about face on this because he has lied so consistently and disrespected president biden and the democrats so consistently there's no reversing that momentum but again i just i couldn't help but be stuck with that moment i want to share it with you a very shocking sentiment by Donald Trump. The reaction from MAGA was pretty visceral. And then again, the disrespect uh, against President Biden by sitting Republican Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. All of that's just so fascinating to me. And I want to know, let me know what you think in this comments.